Thanks to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video. Self-care can help you live a happier and healthier life. Over time, self-care has become a trend. Romanticizing your life, becoming that girl, waking up at 5 a.m., becoming the main character. I'm sure you have come across these types of videos in the past. It's trendy to post a picture of your beautiful new nails, green smoothies, or perfect looking healthy bowls of oatmeal. But have you ever questioned if your current self-care habits actually nurture you or is it something that you see other people are doing and think that maybe you should do it too? In this video, I will tell you the 5 self-care habits or products that I have eliminated from my routine. Giving them up not only has helped me feel happier and healthier, but the practice of minimizing my self-care routine has also helped me feel more in tune with myself. Disclaimer, these are just the habits that no longer work for me, but if following these habits make you happy, then by all means, go ahead and incorporate them in your life. When it comes to self-care, there's no one-size-fits-all answer, and there's not even a one-size-fits-you answer that will work for you all the time. The overall theme is simplification. Look at what you are currently doing for self-care, assess if it still works for you, and stop doing what no longer feels right for you. Because your physical and mental health needs change from day to day, week to week, and year to year, the self-care practices you do often need to evolve too. For me, the first self-care habit that I've stopped doing completely is getting my nails done in the salon. In the past, I always thought getting my nails done is a great way to pamper myself and I always loved the beautiful look of a new nail set. It became part of my self-care routine. I felt more put together and more confident when my nails are done. But two weeks ago, after almost two years of non-stop manicure and having shellacs every three or four weeks, I decided to take a break. And I love it. I think if you get into the habit of getting manicure often, and especially if you have been doing it for a long time, you may feel like your natural nails don't look as good as your painted nails, then you may feel a little self-conscious about the look of your bare nails. At least that's how I felt. From a nice little self-care indulgence, getting my nails done slowly, slowly become an addiction. Somehow, if I don't have my nails done, I just don't feel as confident. So when I took a break from the manicures, it feels very strange at first. I was so used to the look of manicure nails that looking at my bare nails feel unfamiliar. After a few days, I slowly get used to it and start to really like the look of my natural nails. Seeing my natural nails exactly as they are makes me more motivated to take care of them. Now I enjoy putting on my cuticle oil and cream and I love seeing how it improves the look of my natural nails. It feels like skincare to me. It definitely feels healthier than putting chemical field polish on my nails and have them removed by aggressive fouling or acetone. I also like how low maintenance it is. I no longer have to go to the salon every month to get my new nails redone when my new nails grow out. In the future, maybe I'll get my nails painted again for special occasions, but right now I'm perfectly happy with how my nails look and how I can save so much time, money, and effort every month. The second self-care habit that I've stopped doing is watching Netflix or streaming services. I used to think that taking some time out to watch something funny or entertaining is a great way to practice self-care. So when I have a meal, I often watch TV as a way to relax and zone out, using watching my favorite show for self-care as an excuse to forget about my work responsibility and procrastinate. There's so many times I thought I was just going to watch TV for 30 minutes while I have my meal, but binge watching becomes inevitable if I happen to find a great series and end up spending hours and hours on TV. I'm quite extreme, so sometimes I can even finish the whole series in one day, in one sitting. I know this is bad, but in the moment, it's just really hard to resist the temptation. Lately, I've been feeling really determined to stop this bad habit, and I realized what could be a better solution than getting rid of the TV altogether? Out of sight, out of my right? So that's why I cancelled all my subscription services, and I'm giving my TV to one of my friends. I feel really great about this decision, and with the free time that I now have, I start to read and walk again. Reading has always been my favorite pastime and going out for walks helps me to stay physically and mentally healthy. I kind of fell off track over the past month, spending so much time indoor watching movies and not being active, so I'm really excited to get back to this healthy habit. 
I prefer to walk in the morning, and before my walk, I love drinking AG1 by Athletic Greens. AG1 is a nutritional drink that has me really excited about simplifying my health routine. Delivered in one daily serving, it has 75 different ingredients, including vitamins, minerals, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. It's my favorite all-in-one nutritional supplement, supporting energy, focus, gut digestion, and immune system health. Since I started drinking AG1 in the morning, I felt a boost in energy that keeps me going throughout the day. I no longer have cravings for coffee or caffeinated drinks to keep me going. AG1 is also vegan, paleo, and keto friendly. It's for anyone who is looking to get a little healthier. If you're interested in trying out AG1, you can go to athleticgreens.com slash claradow to get started on your order. Athletic Greens will give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs of AG1 with your first purchase. Thank you to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this video and now let's move on to the next self-care habit that I have stopped doing body hair removal particularly with regards to my leg hair I think body hair removal falls under self-grooming which falls under self-care for a long time I was self-conscious of my body hair especially the hair on my legs I used to wax them every couple weeks when the pandemic happened I started to stay indoor more and spend a lot of time by myself and then I realized what's the point of waxing my legs if nobody's gonna see it so I started to let the hair grow out and haven't waxed since then I've slowly learned to feel comfortable going out in dresses or shorts with my leg hair being visible at times I even like showing it off. The longer I had it, the more I love it. I always feel icky about how it's only socially acceptable for men to have visible body hair, so showing this part of me really feels like I'm taking my power back from all the beauty standards and societal pressure, telling me what a feminine woman should look like. I like what having visible body hair says about me, that I'm comfortable with my body exactly how it naturally exists. I'm so proud of how something that I used to be so deeply ashamed of and embarrassed by has become something Thing that I celebrate. It made me realize that I can shift my perspective on any aspect of myself that I don't automatically love. But who knows, maybe I'll want to wax and be smooth for a special occasion. But right now, I have no interest in using my energy to get rid of my leg hair. I like it just how it is. And honestly, I'm so tired of being ashamed of my body in any way. Growing out my body hair has been one way to fight back against those feelings. And I hope that it shows other women and girls who may be feeling bad about their body hair that it's really no big deal and their body hair is natural and beautiful exactly as they are. The next habit that I no longer have is wearing perfume. I used to wear perfume quite often but over time I'm slowly becoming more and more minimalist and I just want to simplify my self-care, self-grooming routine as much as possible. I just realized that wearing perfume doesn't fit in the self-image that I want for myself anymore because I don't want my smell to be some signature scent from a brand which additionally is also shared by at least thousands of other people. Besides that, sometimes I get headaches from smelling certain perfumes if they're too strong or if I smell them for too long. Interestingly, not wearing perfume actually makes me more confident in my own natural scent. Before, when I used to wear perfume, I would feel like something's missing if I forget to put on perfume before I go out. It's like I depend on perfume to make me feel great about how I smell, and I don't want my confidence to depend on something like that. So I just gradually wear perfume less and less until one day, it just becomes something Thing that I no longer do. There's also several articles and studies about how chemicals in perfume can have negative effects on your hormone balance and health. I'll link to some of them in the description box. So I think giving up on perfume is a great thing for me. On the same note, I have also stopped using scented candles. I used to love scented candles very much and I would use them at home all the time. I would light my candles when I were relaxing, reading, taking a bath, or having guests coming over. And I love how they just add a perfect touch of coziness to my place. But there's a big thing that I don't like about scented candles is how they create so much smoke and unpleasant smell when I put them out. Sometimes I would think all these smokes and smell can't possibly be good for my health, right? And it turned out that I may be right. There are a few resources online that show that paraffin wax, fragrance, and candles wick carry some chemicals that can be harmful to our health. The impact is not that serious, but it's enough for me to say no to buying scented candles and lighting them in my home. Also, after not using perfume, 
perfume and scented candles. I slowly get used to not having scent lingering around me and I start to really love my natural scent of my body and my environment. Giving up these self-care habits and products has shown me how freeing it is to limit my beauty and grooming practices to things that I actually enjoy. Turns out that without outside pressure, my beauty routine is incredibly minimalist and I love it. Thank you so much for watching to this part of the video. Let me know what self-care habits that you have also stopped doing. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to. Till next time, love yourself, be kind to yourself and treat others the same way. Bye!